Hello, this is Matthew Randall, and in this tutorial, I am looking at um, rendering from Motion Builder. So I have a render here, uh, or sorry, a motion here that I want to render out, and I'm going to start off by um, adding my own camera to render from. Okay, so if you go inside the Asset Browser here and inside Elements. Uh, you'll see that we can actually pick out a camera and we can drag that onto our stage, okay? Um, now, by default, the camera is actually pointing at a, 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 like a point of interest and we don't want that, we just want it to be like a free roaming camera. So what we can do is um, uh, inside the camera settings and if you can't see the camera settings, you should be able to, in your navigator, uh, under scene, be able to see the camera there. You can just double click on it and the settings should appear, okay? Um, so... Uh, where it says interest here, I'm going to click on the dots and I'm just going to remove this tick, okay, and then just click off this window here, okay, and you'll see that it's removed that point of interest and now that this this should just act like a free roaming camera uh, that I can use in, any, uh, in, in a normal way. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to switch display so I look through that camera, so I'm going to go view, um, perspective, camera, so now I'm looking through that camera and I can just set this up and move it around my scene just like um, uh, my normal producer camera. Okay, so what I want to do now is just set, uh, what I want to do is set the resolution of this camera. So I've, I'm going to go into resolution and just go uh, fixed resolution. And then what I'm going to do is get the width and just set that to 1920. So a standard HD resolution, 1080. Okay, um, great. So, and then what I want to do is just make sure that I frame up this motion the way that I want to, so I can see the whole motion. Let's have a look. Have a look, see how that works. Yeah, I'll go with that, okay. So I've framed up my motion now. Uh, now what we can do is I can kind of choose whether I see the grid, um, uh, whether I see, say, the camera label here, okay or the axis i can turn all these things on and off okay um so if you were doing like um i don't know a scene view you had a scene in here and you had um this motion applied to a character it may be that you don't want this and you just want to render it without this uh, what i'm rendering at the moment is kind of really a technical view of the motion uh, just with the joint data and um, so i want to keep all this information there but if you don't want it uh, all those uh, all those elements you can remove those as well uh, you can also change the background color uh, to see whatever you want, so I can just make that a little bit bluer, there we go, um, uh, um, and I think that's kind of my camera set up uh, in terms of what I want, oh, one thing I do want to do is, let's have a time code, so here where my mouse is, you can see, or you can switch on a time code, okay, uh, so I think that would be useful as well for my technical view, okay, so I can produce a time code there as well, great, now what I want to do is I want to um, change my frames per second. So at the moment I'm at 120 frames per second. That will cause me to render out a video that's 120 frames per second and that's not going to be very useful. So what I want to do is switch this to um, 24 frames per second. Okay. Obviously I can pick whatever I want and if it's not in here I can just go custom to select it there. And obviously the frame, you should be setting the frame rate thinking about what you're planning to do with that frame rate, where you're planning to distribute the, your, your, your motion to. Also notice when I change the frame rate, um, so if I go back to 120, notice how the uh, 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 the, the time code changes um, uh, to align with that frame rate, okay? Excellent, okay? So that, that affects the time code as well. As you can imagine, they're kind of all related. So the time code actually represents the frame that's being displayed, okay? Great, now I'm ready to do my render. So I want to go File, Render, Okay, uh, I'm going to render out as AVI. Um, you can render out as MOV, but you need to download like the QuickTime kit uh, in order to do that. Um, um, uh, if you want to do that, so I'm just going to render out as AVI. Um, you need to set your start and end time. So my start time is zero. My end time is four to six, and that matches the end of the frame here. So just check that that is the case. I'd usually by default it might be zero. Also, set the step time to 1. Uh, again, there might be like a default of 5 or 4 or something like that in there. Uh, what the step time does is it skips frames when it renders. So if I have that as a step time to 2, of 2, it'll only render every other frame. Uh, it'll, it'll be a, it, you'll end up with a video of the same frames per second, but it'll only actually render the motion, uh, update the motion every two frames inside the video. So obviously we don't want that. Uh, we want it to be... Um, uh, we, want, we want to do it every frame, okay? Um, 
Other thing that you want to do is just make sure that your display options are set to, uh, so in this case, because I'm rendering out joint data, uh, the default tends to be models only. If I go models only in this display here, you'll see that we don't have any joint data. It removes the joint data. So what we want to do is go into um, normal so that I can see the joint data. So for so in this example, I want to set it to normal. But it might be that you've applied the joint the motion to a character and you don't want to see the joints, in which case, yes, you can just use models only. So in this case, I'm going to use normal. Next thing I want to do is just make sure that uh, it, that show time code is switched on so I can see the time code in this case. Again, if you don't have a time code, you don't need that. The other thing I like to do is go enable uh, anti-aliasing because without it, uh, the render kind of doesn't look particularly good. So this will make your render look much better if you enable anti-aliasing. And then off, uh, what I often tend to do is turn off the off-screen render just so that I can see it rendering and the progress that it's making. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm now ready to render. So I'm going to go render. Uh, I've already got a file called, sorry, um, uh, I'm just going to go no. Uh, I've already got, a, uh, you can set the file that I'm rendering to here. I've already got a file named uh, output AVI, but that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to go, I'll just render over the top of that. But you can click on here and set where you want to uh, uh, render to there. Okay, so I'm just going to go render. Uh, yes, I want to overwrite it. Uh, yeah, I'll have it uncompressed. That's fine. Uh, uh, I just worry about these compression settings and how other video editors might respond to those. So I just tend to just go uncompressed. Uh, and then I'm just going to click OK. Uh, and then just go OK. Uh, and then you'll see that it's just going to go through the render. So we'll just let that go through. Excellent. And I'm just going to go OK. And now what I want to do is uh, I'm just going to have a look, look at that video, just check that it's OK. So let's just go into my desktop, temp. Uh, it was output AVI. So here we go. Let's just play that. Uh, it's going to move the window over here. Hang on. Here we go. There we go. And we've got our motion uh, all rendered out. Uh, for us to have a look at. Okay, so that's how you render out a motion inside of Motion Builder. Okay, thank you for watching.